Here we have the uh, basic components of the Mark II servo bracket. Um, first a shout out though to Duncan of Tam Valley Depot for uh, his work on a great servo driver board, the Octopus 3, which drives eight servos. And then also to Dave of Megapoints Controller, who in watching his videos uh, saw how they were mounting the servos and it's a lot better than the Mark I. So, uh, it's all based upon this aluminum channel. It's half inch aluminum channel. Bought mine at Lowe's Home Improvement. You simply have to have a hacksaw and cut the required length, whichever works out for you depending upon which servo you have. Uh, it simply has a couple of mounting holes to be able to mount it up under the layout. A hole for the actuator wire to go through that acts as a fulcrum. Now these particular servos I got off of eBay, these SG90 servos, are just a tad narrow for the channel so it doesn't hold quite tight so I've got uh, some just scrap styrene that uh, I've used to shim, shim out the channel to get a nice press fit because that's what's going to be holding the servo in. Also on the side here I've drilled and tapped two 256 holes to mount the micro switch that's going to be used for changing the frog polarity. I have white wire hooked to common which is going to be the frog on my layout and then DCCA and DCCB are the red and the green wire. Have it hooked to a three pin connector and the frog is in the middle that way if I get under there and plug everything together and find out that I've, I've got the frog polarity wrong, all I have to do is rotate that 180 degrees and correct it. On the servo horn here I've added a little bit of piano wire, the same as we use for the throw bar actuator, and just hooked it in on the short little ear here and gave it a little piece out here and that's what's going to reach out and grab the micro switch that's uh, on the side of this. And then that will give us our frog polarity. The actuator bar just has a little Z bend in the end to go through the servo horn here and then it goes up through the fulcrum and then up through your road bed and then goes through the turnout actuator bar. And what's really nice about this system that I like is it's completely modular. You can replace the micro switch if anything happens by just taking out a couple of screws. Uh, the servo is simply a press fit, it's not glued in. The actuator just hooks into the arm and then goes up through. Uh, everything comes apart really easily and you can uh, update it um, anytime something goes wrong. Okay, now we're going to assemble the Mark II. The micro switch has already been attached to the side of the U channel using the 256 screws. Now we'll take our throw bar link here and we'll attach it to the servo arm and we'll run that through the hole in the channel which is going to provide the fulcrum and then we simply press fit the servo and we make sure that we've got it positioned correctly front to back so that the okay now that we've got everything put together See, as the servo actuates, the little bar on the horn comes out and moves the micro switch to switch the frog polarity. And just as easy as that. And then now we just mount it up underneath with two screws and plug everything in and we're ready to go. Okay, here we're ready to set up our preliminary settings. I have uh, the Octo 3 hooked up along with this really cool device, the remote aligner. What I really like about this is that in the future if you ever need to change a setting you can just hook up this cable to it and leave everything installed on the layout and then use this little remote board to, uh, to change every, anything you need. Uh, so first step, we'll put on the center jumper that moves all the servos to their center position. Looks like we got this one lined up fairly well to start with. So we know that we're centered. 
Now I have this one hooked up on servo number two and right now the zero is flashing. So we'll go one and then now we're on two. So now we can begin setting our positions. So we'll hold this one down for approximately a second, let it up, and then now we can adjust where we want. Okay, that's good. Then we hit next again, and then we'll throw it. And that's not looking too bad right off the get-go. Let's go ahead and adjust it a little bit. So now that we're in the opposite way, again, we hold the center button down for a little more than a second. Then we can adjust it, say next, and then test our settings. And it's looking good. And then if this happens to be the opposite way you need it, you can hit the swap button. And then now that is closed and that's thrown, or vice versa. Okay, now we have our servo reassembled into the bracket. We'll throw it the other way. The arm comes out and actuates the micro switch. And settings look pretty good. If we need a little bit more throw, we've still got a little bit more room. You could trim off the top of the servo horn if you need it to go even a little bit more. But uh, since I didn't need to, I didn't bother with that extra step. And it's ready to be installed. The most challenging part of the whole install is to get the actuator wire fed up from underneath and through the hole and the throw bar. Oh, there we go. So now we're centered. We have our actuator wire up through the throw bar. Now we'll switch to the underside and finish the installation. Okay, I've added a bit of double-sided tape to the back side of the aluminum channel. That'll help now that we have everything lined up. We'll push it up and it, give it a bit of a push and that should stick it to the sub road bed. Now it's being held in place. Now we uh, will have an easier time of putting the two screws in that will hold it permanently. Alright, so we've got everything installed. We've powered up the board. The switch is thrown. Let's hit the button and throw it the other way. And there we have it.